right, so now we're moving on to some of the last things that we're going to cover within this unit, uh, and that's going to be uh, unit 5D, and it's going to be solving multi-step equations. All right, we're really just going to be introduced into this, and next year it's when you're really going to learn about this in detail. But since we're learning this, I think it's a good opportunity to at least have you see this this year, and then that way next year, seeing it the second time will make it a lot easier for you to understand. All right, so our objective, all we're going to be able to do by the end of this video is know how to solve multi-step equations, all right? So you notice we're not doing inequalities today. We're gonna to be doing equations because we're gonna learn how to solve for the multi-step equations. And then we're going to apply that to the inequalities just like we did before, all right? So before we get started into any uh, questions, we need to understand how, what steps do we take when we are following uh, or when we're solving a multi-step equation. All right, so one of the things we learned before that is if you had an expression like we do here, three times five plus two, there are certain ways that we have to solve this. There's, certain or there's a certain order that we have to go, and that's our PEMDAS, where we first do our parentheses, then our exponents, and then remember, multiplication and division, we do left to right. And the same thing with addition and subtraction, we also do left to right. So whatever appears first on our left-hand side is what we would do first. Now, um, with addition and subtraction, it really doesn't matter left to right that you do first. For, for multiplication and division, it does. All right, so let me go ahead and erase this because what we're going to do is we're going to first use what we know for um, our PEMDAS to simplify this expression, and then we're going to talk about how that would apply if we were trying to solve this. So here I drew a box. So we're imagining that we're filling in this box using our PEMDAS. All right, so let's go ahead and let's figure out how we would do this. Well, first thing we do is we look for are there any parentheses. And no, there's not. So that means we wouldn't actually have to use our parentheses, but that would be the very first thing that we actually tried to do was be our parentheses, what there was not. Then we look and see, is there any exponents? No, there's no exponents. That means this can also go in our box, all right? We finish with it. Now we look and see, is there any multiplication and division? Well, there's multiplication, not division, so we will first multiply this. Well, three times five will give me 15. So now I'm left with 15 plus two. So we did our multiplication, so that would be the next thing that goes inside of our box. All right, now we look and see, is there any division? No, there's no division, so we can go ahead and put this inside of our box as well. And then we look and see, is there any addition or subtraction? Well, there is addition, so we can go ahead and do 15 plus 2, which is 17. So we know that the expression of 3 times 5 plus 2 is equal to 17, and that we finished it with our addition. Right? And then there is no subtraction for us to do. So we can go ahead and put this inside of our box, and we can just act like we're closing the lid on this box. All right? Now, what if I didn't have it this way? What if instead of 3, plus five, or three times 5 plus 2, we had it like this? 3 times some number x plus 2 is equal to 17. What if I gave it to you like this and said, okay, now solve for x? So you notice that when we're simplifying our expressions, we followed our PEMDAS. Well, now if we wanted to undo what we just did, well, then the first thing that we're going to have to do is we're going to have to actually undo it within this order. So we're going to have to undo our PEMDAS in the reverse order. So that means we don't start with our parentheses because you notice when we did our parentheses, it would be at the bottom of the box. And if we're trying to unpack this box, which is what we're trying to do now, we couldn't start with the thing all the way at the bottom. We would have to remove what's at top first. So that means... When we're solving a multi-step um, equation, we look and see, is there any subtraction or addition that's happening first? Well, there's no subtraction, so that means I can unpack this from my box, and now I can take it out. And then I look and see, okay, well, is there any addition? Well, yes, there's addition right here. Well, then we ask ourselves, well, what is the inverse operation? Because remember, when we're solving our equations, we're using our inverse operations. Well, what is the inverse operation of addition? Well, it's subtraction. And what I do to one side, I have to do to the other. Some of the mistakes I was seeing with your inequality problems is that you guys would do minus two here and then plus two here. But the inverse of addition is subtraction. So now I can go ahead and get, well, 3x is equal to 15. And now I did that addition or I, I undid that addition. So that way I can take this out of my box. And then I look and say, okay, well, what's next to the box? Well, division. Is there any division here? No, we're multiplying our variables. So that means I can take out my division. And then I look and say, all right, multiplication. Well, yes, there is multiplication right here. Well, what is the inverse of multiplication? Division is. So I can then go ahead and divide each side by 3. And now I get, well, what is 15 divided by 3? 5. So x is then equal to 5. So you see, when you're actually unpacking this box, meaning when you're solving your equation, you would actually do our PEMDAS in reverse. So I hope that this could kind of give you a visual representation. 
But I'm going to leave this PEMDAS here off to the side. Just remember, when we're solving our equations, we are undoing them in the reverse order because when we satisfy or when we simplified our expression, what we did first was at the bottom of the box. So that way, when we go to undo it, we have to start with what we did last. All right. And if you notice here, we said X was equal to five. Well, we knew when we did three times five plus two, it gave me 17. So it's showing you that we're getting back to our original number there. All right. So I'm going to um, erase some of this, leave the PEMDAS there, and we're going to go ahead and practice this a couple problems um, of solving multi-step equations. All right, so if we have this problem here, x over 6 minus 4 is equal to 2, well, I can look and see, well, there's multiple things being done to my variable here. I'm dividing, and I'm also subtracting. So that means it's not a one-step equation, but it's a multi-step equation. So I look. Remember, when we're doing this, actually, let me change. When we're doing this, remember, we start from our bottom and work our way up, because what we would have done last if this was an expression is what we need to do first if we're solving. So that means the first I'm looking for, is there any addition or subtraction? And yes, we do have subtraction here. So that means we're going to subtract. Well, what is the inverse operation of subtraction? Well, that is addition. Remember, addition undo, will undo our, our subtraction. So that means I will add four to this side. And what I do to the other side, or what I do to one side, I have to do to the other. So now I get x over six is equal to six. And now I look. And see, well, the next thing that I would do after addition and or after subtraction is addition. Well, I don't have any addition. Do I have any division? Yes. Remember, this means divide. Well, what is the inverse operation of division? Well, I know that multiplication is. So what I do to one side to get rid of my divided by six, I would have to multiply by six. What I do to one side, I have to do to the other. And now that will give me these cancel out. So now I'm left with x is equal to six times six or 36. So now I solve for my answer. Now, one thing that you can do to check your work every single time is you can go ahead and plug it in. Does 36 over 6 minus 4, does this actually equal 2? Well, 36 divided by 6 is going to give me 6. 6 minus 4, does this equal to 2? Well, 6 minus 4 is in fact 2, so that can show, yes, we got it right. All right. So for these questions, you can always plug it back in and check your work and see does this actually work? Now, when we actually go through, uh, or for now, we're never going to do any parentheses or exponents right now um, because uh, that's something that this that you'll learn more in depth um, next year. So for now, we're only going to focus on multi-step equations that only have multiplication, division, ad addition, or subtraction. All right, now, if we're given a problem like this, I'm purposely doing this because you might say, well, what happens if, when we have addition and subtraction? Well, whenever we have addition and subtraction, um, you'll see, uh, for now, it will just mean that we can simplify our equation before we actually go to solve. So if I'm actually looking to do this, I see there's multiple things being done to my variable here. However, when I look at this, these are two constants, uh, minus three plus six. I can do these two. All right, because I can simplify this. I don't have to subtract 6 and add 3 one by one. I can combine these first, get 5x, and then I can look at this as 6 minus 3, which is equal to 3. So then I would have plus 3 because 6, negative 3 plus 6 is positive 3 is equal to 38. So you see, for now, our problems, we're not really able to do addition and subtraction together. Um, you'll see the next problem that we do, we can do multiplication and division as if they're their own pieces. Uh, but for the most part, when you have problems like this, you're going to be able to simplify first, um, and then you can start solving. But if we look here, now there's nothing I can simplify. So I remember I'm starting from the bottom, and I'm working my way up. So I look and see, is there any subtraction or addition? Yes, there's addition right here. Well, what is the inverse operation of addition? It is subtraction. So that means in order to get rid of this plus 3, I would have to minus 3. What I do to one side, I have to do to the other. Well, 3 minus 3 is 0, so now I'm just left with 5x is equal to... 38 minus 3 is 35. All right, then from here, what I would do is say, okay, I did my, there was no subtraction, I did my, now is there any division or multiplication? Well, yes, this is 5 times x. So there is multiplication, there's no division. So to get rid of multiplication, though, I would need to divide. So now I divide each side by 5, and x is equal to 7. All right, now I solve for what my x is equal to, and I can just plug it back in to see does this actually work. Well, does 5 times 7 minus 3 plus 6, does this actually equal to 38? Well, the first thing we would have to do is our multiplication. Well, 5 times 7 is 35. 
minus 3 plus 6. Does this equal to 38? Well, then the next thing we would do is 35 minus 3, which is 32, plus 6. Does this equal to 38? And you see 32 plus 6 is 38. So 38 does, in fact, equal to 38. So we can always check our work. All right, there's just one more question that we're going to do, and then that will be it. All right, so for this problem, I'm going to show you a couple different ways that we will eventually be able to uh, solve this problem uh, when we get down to this, when we isolate this, this 3 over 2x. But first, let's go ahead and start. Remember, it's our PEMDAS in reverse. So we look to see, is there any addition or subtraction? Well, there's no subtraction, so that means I don't have to do anything with that. There is addition, so that means I need to do this first. So how do I get rid of addition? Subtraction. So 4 minus 4 is 0. See how it cancels it out? What I do to one side, I have to do to the other. So now I get 3x over 2 is equal to 18. Right? I'm actually going to write this out twice, and I'll show you the two different ways that you can go about solving this. It really does not matter which method you choose. Right? The first method is you can look at this and say, all right, well, the next thing I would do is division, and this is division. So that means that I can go ahead and get rid of my division through multiplication. So since I'm dividing by 2, I can go ahead and multiply by 2. So now I get 2 divided by 2. They will cancel out. And now I just get 3x is equal to 36. And now I look and see, is there any multiplication? Yes, there is multiplication. And how do I get rid of multiplication? Through division. So then I can go ahead and divide, and I can get x is equal to 12. So you can do it step by step if you really want to. You can just get rid of your division first and then get rid of your, your multiplication. Or the, another way you can think about this is you can say that this is 3 over 2x is equal to 18. So you can think about the entire fraction is being multiplied to my x right now. So what I can do is I can go ahead and divide each side by 3 over 2. And when I divide by a fraction, remember we keep change flip. So that means that we will go ahead and keep our first number as 18, change to multiplication, and we flip to 2 over 3. And now we can go ahead and we can multiply 18 times 2 is 36. 36 divided by 3 is equal to 12. So then we got our answer as x is equal to 12. Right? So it doesn't matter if you wanted to go ahead and do it step by step. Or you can go ahead and you can think about this as a fraction, 3 over 2. Um, and then there's one other way that uh, we can do this. And I'll show you this, guys, um, on when we're meeting together in class. All right? But that is it for this video. Uh, there's going to be some questions that you're going to do at the end just so I can gauge, and then um, we'll go over some things together in class uh, on our next Zoom call. All right?